Well, good morning. My name is Dwayne. Welcome to Directional Bible Ministries. Today is July the 9th. Today, Lord willing, we're going to wrap up Acts chapter number 10. So go ahead and open up your Bibles to Acts chapter number 10, and we will start in verse number 30, just for a little bit of context. Um, Acts chapter number 10, of course, we know that Paul, or Saul, was converted under the kingdom gospel in Acts chapter number 9. And now here, in uh, Acts chapter number 10, there is a refocus back onto Peter. And, um, of course, Peter is being called out of his comfort zone uh, to minister to a Gentile. Uh, this is uh, very significant because uh, the apostles had not heretofore <laughs> went to Gentiles. And we've discussed why they were called, they were told not to go to Gentiles. So, in verse number one, we're introduced to Cornelius. He was a, a uh, centurion, a Roman centurion of the Italian band. 
And let's see, we got all the way down to verse 34 yesterday. Um, <clears throat> even in our Bibles, you know, we uh, uh, we look at the the section headings. Um, they are already predisposed uh, to not separate the kingdom from the grace gospel. Uh, it's the way they're set up. I mean, almost every study Bible, even uh, Bibles that don't have study notes, uh, lean this way. Uh, so the average person looks at this and goes, see there, the Gentiles, hear the good news. Good news being death, burial, resurrection. Um, not so. Uh, so we're going to pick up verse number 34. So good morning, uh, folks. Good morning, Otis. Good morning, Scott. And God bless you guys. Um, <clears throat> then Peter, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just, verse number 30, I said, right? Um, and Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon the Tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. And immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded thee of God. So Cornelius here <clears throat> is explaining that he is still in the dark as well. It was only, he was only being obedient to the man that came in bright clothing and that Peter was to tell him what thou oughtest to do. And of course, we see Cornelius is responding to Peter's question. I ask, therefore, for what intent ye have sent me? So that's what leads Cornelius saying, this is what happened. And we're here to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. In other words, Cornelius is saying, God told me to call you and you were going to tell me what I needed to do. So he's explaining that to Peter. Now look in verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Um, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So now Peter is putting it all together. Vision plus Cornelius, gospel. Um, as such, many will say, and I pointed this out last time, that Cornelius was the first Gentile Christian. However, the content simply does not bear that out. Uh, Peter's message is not a grace gospel, and we're going to see that as we work our way down through here at all. It's not happening. Look at verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism of John. So Peter is coming preaching that word that began in Galilee after the baptism of John. Well, what was that word that was preached in Galilee after the baptism of John? Repent for the kingdom, repent and be baptized for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That is what Peter is, is teaching here. That is the kingdom gospel. So he is simply sharing what had been and was going on in regards to the nation of Israel and the preaching of Christ. And apparently it was so well known that he assumes that even the Gentiles had already heard about it. Again, there's nothing new here. Jesus' ministry began in Galilee after the baptism of John the Baptist. And Jesus' message was the kingdom message, presenting himself as the king and offering, or at least not offering, but preparing the nation for the kingdom. And then look at verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Again, referring to Jesus' baptism at the hands of John and his ministry thereafter that only proved that he was indeed their Messiah. And then look at verse 39. And we are witnesses of all these things which he both did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. So in other words, we were there throughout his ministry. We were witnesses to everything that he did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem before they slew him and hanged him on a tree. So again, our Lord's ministry was exclusively to the nation of of Israel is what we're seeing here in this text. Now look in verse 40. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God. Now, of course, his resurrection from the dead was the ultimate proof that he was indeed their Messiah. And they, who they? The, the apostles, those who were chosen before of God, who would be witnesses. That doesn't mean that others did not see him. In 1 Corinthians 15, 6, after that he was seen of about 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained Unto, unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. That's not the ones he's talking about here, but unto witnesses chosen before God. These are the ones that would bear witness of that resurrection, as seen in verse 42. See, so he says here, Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before God. And that may even be referring to that 40-day interlude between the resurrection and the ascension. That 40-day seminar where Jesus filled in the blanks about what was going on. Even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people. These are those chosen witnesses. To preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of both the quick and the dead. And then notice in verse 43, to him gave all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. And while Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them all, which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, that speaking of Jews that were accompanying Peter, as many as came with Peter, because that the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost, as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they prayed, they prayed, then they prayed him to tarry certain days. So let's look at some of this right here. This is the kingdom gospel. And Cornelius' response in the next verse is a kingdom response in that it is followed by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and what? Baptism. So you see, so far we have seen the Holy Spirit come upon the twelve. He came upon the other Jewish believers. He came upon the Samaritan believers. And now he's coming upon Gentile believers. So, it must be concluded that the filling of the Holy Spirit is not a mark of the church. But instead, it is an empowerment to preach the kingdom gospel. It was an empowerment. And that's exactly what Acts 1.8 says. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
And what will happen? You will be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You will be the witnesses. And that's what we were talking about when it, up here in this verse, but unto witnesses chosen before God, referring to the twelve. So again, the filling of the Holy Spirit at this point is not a mark of the church, but an empowerment to preach the kingdom gospel. Now, for years, I taught the same thing, but I said, you know, you're filled with the Holy Spirit so that you can preach the gospel. And that's true, but not in the sense of what's happening in this text. The filling of the Holy Spirit was to preach the kingdom gospel. Just like Acts 1.8 said, they would receive that power, that dynamite, that deutimus, so that they could be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now again, some will say that Peter was preaching and Cornelius was responding to the grace gospel. But if that was truly the case, nobody told Paul because he consistently argued that he was the first to hear it and he was the first to receive it. So Peter could not have been preaching that grace gospel at this point, which means Cornelius was not the first Gentile into the body of Christ. As a matter of fact, Paul said in 1 Timothy 1.16, How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Why? For pattern to those that should come hereafter who believe on him for life everlasting. So Cornelius could not have been the first convert into the body of Christ. Cornelius accepted a kingdom gospel. Also in Galatians chapter 1, verse number 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul was the first one to receive the kingdom gospel. Peter was not preaching the kingdom gospel here. Again, if he was, Paul was delusional. Ephesians 3, 2, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me toward you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words. Wherefore, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery. Romans 2, 16, In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to what? My gospel. Not Peter's gospel. Not the Twelve's gospel. My gospel. Romans 16, 25. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to Peter's gospel, the twelve's gospel, my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. No one knew about it until Paul. In Galatians 1, 15. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach among the heathen immediately. I didn't go talk to flesh and blood. Neither did I go up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia. Paul received something that the twelve did not have. In Galatians 2.2 2, I went up by revelation and communicated to them. Who's them? The apostles in Jerusalem, that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. This was in Acts chapter number 15. We'll get there. But privately to them which were reputationless by any means, I should have ran in vain. So Paul even said that when he did preach to the Jews prior to the revelation, he only spoke to the Jews what the prophets and Moses said should come. So Paul did respond to a kingdom gospel on the Damascus Road in Acts chapter number 9, and he preached only that which was spoken of 
by Moses and the prophets. Did Moses and the prophets speak of the body of Christ? Did Moses and, and the prophets speak of, 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 the, of, the, uh, of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Did they speak of a Jew and Gentile called out assembly, if you will, the body of Christ? No. In Acts 16, 22, he said, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. I mean, that verse is wrong there. I gotta start checking my stuff. But I was I was I was talking about when he he only spoke what Moses and the prophets said should come. I need to correct that. Maybe one of you guys can grab that for me. Um, under the kingdom gospel. They only believed in the Messiah for eternal life and national salvation. Again, the kingdom gospel was not an individual gospel. It was a national gospel for national repentance, for national restoration. But under the grace gospel, we believe in the completed work of Christ on the cross. The grace gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The kingdom gospel is simply Christ and thus receiving immediate and personal salvation outside of any kingdom promises or requirements. So the two are different. This is not the message that Peter taught in this chapter. Notice also that Peter immediately commanded them to be baptized. Why? It was a requirement of the kingdom gospel. On the other hand, Paul said that he was not sent to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross should be made of none effect. So Paul did not preach that. Paul would not have commanded them to be baptized, but Peter did. Um, let's see. Uh, Acts, there we go. See, I'm, I'm not all that far off, Scott. Thank you, sir. Uh, that's where... Uh, Let's see. Yeah. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. So, very good. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. But Peter and Paul were preaching. There for a while, yes, they were preaching the same message. But once Paul received the revelation, he preached the kingdom gospel. Now, notice what happened next. And the apostles and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was coming back to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision were mad at him. They contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into men of uncircumcised, and you ate with them? Notice Peter's reception when he returned to Jerusalem. Why were they upset with him? If he was only obeying Matthew chapter 28, verse number 19. Obviously, it is because Matthew 28, verse number 19 does not mean what we have been taught that it means. So, very interesting. So, tomorrow we'll continue uh, in Acts uh, chapter number 11. Well, God bless you guys. And um, I hope you're enjoying this study as much as I am. I, uh, every day I study a little bit and I learn a little more. And uh, I hope the same can be said of you. Um, but um, so tomorrow we'll, we'll pick up in uh, Acts chapter number 11. And I hope you guys have a great day. Remember how much God loves you and wants the best for you. He's working all things out for your good.